Hello and welcome to the 11 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shadi Aqil. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree Number 30 for 2018, ending the fourth session of the fourth legislative term of the Shura and Representative Councils, starting from Sunday, July 1, 2018. The decree shall be promulgated in the official Gazette. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued Law 27 of 2018 regarding the amending of some provisions of the Court of Cassation Law after approval by the Shura and Representative Councils. The amendment stipulated that Article 8 of the Court of Cassation Law, issued by Law Decree 8 of 1989, be replaced as follows. Litigants may impugn before the Cassation Court verdicts issued by the High Civil or Sharia Court of Appeals in its appeals capacity in the following instances. Number one, if the impugned verdict was based on a breach of law or error in its application or interpretation. Number two, if the verdict or its procedure were unlawful as to affect the verdict. The amendment cancel Article 8 of Ditto of the Court of Cassation Law issued by Law Decree 8 of 1989. The Prime Minister and the Ministers, each according to their domain, have been tasked to implement the provisions of this law which becomes effective from the day following the date of its publication in the official Gazette. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace, his representative for charity work and youth affairs, the chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who presented to His Majesty the winner of the World Professional Bodybuilding Championship, Samil Haddad, after winning first place and a gold medal in the IFBB Pro Spain Championship, which was held this month. His Majesty expressed thanks to champion Al Haddad and congratulated him on this outstanding achievement, wishing him further success. His Majesty praised the professional classification adopted by the Kingdom, which provided the necessary regulatory and legal environment as the sports professions were included in the tables of classifications as certified professions. His Majesty handed Al Haddad the first passport to the first professional athlete as an official profession. He noted the importance of professionalism in various fields to achieve excellence. He expressed appreciation for His Highness Sheikh Nasser's efforts in leading Bahraini sports under the slogan, The Year of Gold. His Majesty stated that His Highness's efforts contributed to making outstanding local, regional and global achievements. He underscored the programs and plans implemented by Bahrain Weightlifting Federation, which helped prepare athletes to participate in global championships. He hailed the spirit of perseverance and challenge of the people of Bahrain who have proven their competitiveness and excellence in various sports. His Majesty noted the keenness to provide all forms of support to the youth to continue their sporting achievements. For his part, Al Haddad expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King, hailing his encouragement and support which contributed to making this outstanding achievement. He also expressed thanks to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for his support and provision of facilitations. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Highness Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, marking the success of the surgery that First Deputy Prime Minister, Defense Minister Sheikh Nasser Sabah Al Ahmed Al Sabah has undergone recently. His Majesty the King wished the Emir of Kuwait good health and happiness and extended congratulations to the First Deputy Prime Minister on the success of the surgery, wishing him a speedy recovery. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa sent a congratulatory cable to the First Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense of the State of Kuwait, Sheikh Nasser Sabah Al Ahmed Al Sabah. His Royal Highness the Premier extended his sincere congratulations on the occasion of Sheikh Nasser's successful surgery operation. His Royal Highness wished Sheikh Nasser Al Sabah a speedy recovery and prayed the Almighty to bless him with abundant health and happiness. 
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also wished the brotherly state of Kuwait continuous growth and prosperity under the leadership of its Emir, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman and Khalifa chaired today a meeting to follow up on the executive steps to activate the work of the government's parliamentary committee to restudy the retirement laws in light of the government's keenness to look into the proposals and recommendations and achieve consensus between the executive and legislative authorities. The meeting was held in light of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness ordered that the formation consists of four ministers led by the Minister of Finance and with the membership of the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, the Minister of Labor and Social Development and the Minister of Representative and Shura Council Affairs. His Royal Highness directed the committee to cooperate with the representative of the Legislative Authority and to coordinate with the representative and Shura Councils to hold the first meeting. The Prime Minister noted that retirement laws are a top priority to the government because of their importance to citizens. He also affirmed that the government is keen on the sustainability of pension and insurance funds, as well as maintaining the rights of subscribers and pensioners by establishing effective programs to support them and develop pension services. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a congratulatory cable to the First Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense of the State of Kuwait, Sheikh Nasser Sabah Al Ahmed Al Sabah. His Royal Highness expressed his sincere congratulations to Sheikh Nasser on the success of his recent surgery and prayed to the Almighty to bless him with abundant health and a speedy recovery and to the State of Kuwait further progress and development under the leadership of the Is Emir, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today received the Ambassador of Germany to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Alfred Simon Prats, at Rafar Palace, marking the end of the Ambassador's service in the Kingdom. During the meeting, His Royal Highness highlighted the strong ties between Bahrain and Germany across different areas and sectors. He extended thanks and appreciation to the Ambassador for his efforts in enhancing bilateral relations between the two countries and wished him success in his future endeavors. For its part, the Ambassador expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and for the support he had received during his tenure in the Kingdom. His Majesty the King's Representative for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa asserted that Bahrain started implementing a strategy to activate sports professionalism that will pave the way to develop the sporting movement in the Kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Nasser noted that the Kingdom has started taking its first steps in sports professionalism through His Majesty the King's grant to Samir Haddad the first passport to be given to a citizen with professional athlete as an official profession. His Highness Sheikh Nasser also praised the support of His Majesty the King to the Kingdom strategy in activating sports professionalism in Bahrain due to His Majesty the King's belief in the importance of professionalism and its outstanding effects on sports in the Kingdom. Sheikh Nasser also affirmed that Samuel Haddad is the first athlete to be granted with professional athletes and the door is open for more athletes. His Highness Sheikh Nasser has announced on his personal account on Instagram the granting of Al-Haddad the first passport to be given to citizens with professional athlete as an official profession. Sheikh Nasser also posted on his account photos of Al-Haddad being granted the passport, identifying him as a professional bodybuilder. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that launching Khalid bin Hamad Tournament of Innovation in Artificial Intelligence stemmed from His Highness's keenness on implementing the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa that are aimed at continuing the efforts of developing the scientific field in Bahrain through the initiatives launched by His Highness that contribute to the development of education. His Highness Sheikh Khalid held the role of the government under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, 
and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa in launching developmental projects that are aimed at the educational sector in accordance with the government work. His Highness stated that launching the tournament stems from his belief in the importance of supporting the outcomes of education in line with Bahrain Vision 2030 to advance the abilities of Bahraini students. His Highness asserted that signing a memorandum of understanding between Bahrain Polytechnic and Microsoft is a remarkable step that will engage the participating students to learn artificial intelligence tools and technologies to increase their expertise in the scientific field. An implementation of the directives of His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa to support the Khalid bin Hamad Tournament of Innovation and in Artificial Intelligence, which was, held, which was organized by Bahrain Polytechnic and Microsoft in partnership with His Highness Sheikh Khalid's media office, Bahrain Polytechnic signed the Memorandum of Understanding with Microsoft that will enhance cooperation between the two sides in the field of utilizing artificial intelligence in the university and will provide a platform for students to develop their projects and ideas and enable them to address economic challenges using technology. The tournament comes in line with His Highness's initiatives to support the scientific field. The tournament will also grant the participant with the best idea the opportunity to participate in the Imagine Cup World Finals that will be held in Seattle, Washington in July. A wonderful initiative that we've uh, undertaken around artificial intelligence and introducing the idea of artificial intelligence to young people across the kingdom. And it's been very fortunate for us that uh, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa has chosen to be our patron and has supported us so uh, generously to develop a hack fest. It's an annual event that brings young people together to and employ new kinds of technologies around artificial intelligence. And our inaugural event was such a success that it's now going to be an annual event uh, under the patronage of uh, His Royal Highness. And in partnership with Microsoft, we've got a good relationship with Microsoft at Bahrain Polytechnic, and they've agreed to work with us on an annual basis to help support this event. And as successful as the event was this year, we expect it to be better and better next year. And uh, the other thing that will emerge out of this partnership is we're going to create a center of excellence, an, an excellence academy around the development of artificial intelligence applications. And what we found is that young people were just so enthralled and so excited at their ability to use these Microsoft software tools to develop artificial intelligence apps that we're hopeful that we can start to develop new kinds of programs at the Polytechnic that will lead to new kinds of jobs and new kinds of businesses here in the kingdom that leverage uh, artificial intelligence. So this is a, a great start but it could grow into be something much bigger. The purpose of the MOU is to partner up with Microsoft who will uh, provide us with the necessary tools and equipment that allow students to uh, develop, uh, to work in latest technologies and develop new applications that will be ready for the market. At the same time, we're currently also working in um, establishing uh, the first academy in artificial intelligence, which will be beneficial uh, to the Polytechnic and the market as well. The Commander-in-Chief of Bahrain Defense Force, the BDF Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa today signed with the Pakistani Defense Secretary Zamir Al Hassan Shah. A joint defense cooperation agreement between Bahrain and Pakistan. The BDF Commander-in-Chief expressed pleasure in signing the agreement which will increase joint military cooperation. He welcomed the Pakistani Defense Secretary, hailing the remarkable relation between Bahrain and Pakistan and the development they witness in various fields. The signing was attended by the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Jalahma, the head of the Office of the General Command, Major General Hassan Mohammed Saad, Acting Chief of Staff, Major General Abdullah Hassan Al Naimi, Assistant Chief of Staff for Supply and Logistics, Rear Admiral Yusuf Ahmed Malala, Director of Military Cooperation, Rear Admiral Mohammed Hashim Al Saada, and Assistant Chief of Staff for Operations, Major General Ghanem Ibrahim Al Fadala.
The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed bin Ibrahim al Mullah, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King, marking the conclusion of the fourth session of the fourth legislative term. Al Mullah took pride in the unlimited royal support for the representative and shura councils and His Majesty's directives that are for the best interests of the Kingdom of Bahrain and its people. Al Mullah also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, paying tribute to His Royal Highness's directives to enhancing a constructive cooperation with the legislative body with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Speaker also extended his thanks and appreciation for Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Saleh and the Council's members, in addition to Minister of Shura and Representative, rather Representative Council Affairs, Mr. Ghana bin Fadl al Bu'ainin, who provided support to legislative and government joint action. Al Mullah also praised the sincere efforts, noble services, and keenness of the members of the parliament in supporting parliamentary, legislative, and supervisory work in Bahrain, in addition to their cooperation and the adoption of many national legislations in various fields to achieve the goals of comprehensive development. He affirmed that the national action and the representative council was done for the sake of the kingdom under the one family and in accordance with the constitutional and civilizational practices which reflect the democratic, consistent and steady approach under the reform project led by His Majesty the King. Al Mullah meanwhile expressed his sincere thanks to the General Secretariat of the Council under the chairmanship of Abdullah bin Khalif al Dosari for their support and services for parliamentary work throughout the legislative term. Al Mullah also praised the prominent and responsible role of the media and newspapers in supporting the Council and their coverage of the work of the Council and all citizens for their national contributions in supporting the parliamentary work and the reform project. Finally, he stressed that work and achievement are continuous in the Kingdom of Bahrain, adding that the current challenges and developments necessitate greater cohesion, national unity and support for the democratic process and the promotion of national political participation in the coming stage. Upon the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for the government's parliamentary committee to restudy retirement laws while ensuring consensus between the executive and legislative branches, the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah, ordered that the formation of the government's parliamentary committee consists of four representative council members, led by the first Deputy Speaker of the Council, MP Al Ali Al Aradi and the membership of the head of the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee, MP Majid Al Majid, head of the Financial and Economics Committee, MP Abdul Rahman Bu Ali, and head of the Service Committee, MP Abbas Al Madi Al Mullah, noted the importance of intensifying efforts and prioritizing the issue of retirement, according to the royal directives, through cooperation and coordination between the representative and shura councils, to achieve the public interest of subscribers and pensioners and ensure the sustainability of pension funds. He noted the legislative authority's keenness on achieving the aspirations of the citizens under the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. Al Mullah expressed confidence on the legislative and executive authority's ability to overcome all challenges and achieve consensus among all parties. The Chairman of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah, chaired yesterday morning the 37th meeting of the Council where it approved two draft, rather two draft laws, amending some provisions of the Municipality Laws No. 35 of 2001. Then the Council approved a draft law amending some provisions of the Child Law No. 37 of 2012. The proposal in issuing a law to support and protect people with disabilities was also discussed and approved. The Council reviewed the proposal of the Services Committee's amended report on the proposal on the provisions of Law 25 of 1998 concerning private educational and training institutions, where it rejected the Committee's first proposal and approved the second. The Council concluded by approving a resolution on granting two hours break to parents with children with disability and to children of Bahaini women married to foreigners.
in accordance with the directives of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa to form a parliamentary committee to re-examine the retirement laws and give the issue of retirement priority and the efforts of reaching consensus between the executive and legislative authorities, Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Saleh sent a letter to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa on selecting the members of the Shura Council who will represent the Council and the Parliamentary Committee charged with following up on this issue. The Shura representatives are the vice, rather first vice chairman of the Shura Council, Jamal Mohammed Fakhro, the chairperson of the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee, Delal Jassim Zayed, the chairman of the Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs, Khalid Hussein Al Masqati, the head of the Services Committee, Dr. Jihad Abdullah Al Fadl. The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended the Human Resources Awarding Ceremony of the Institutional Excellence Certificate awarded by the European Foundation for Quality Management, which is responsible for evaluating companies and institutions worldwide, after the department received the four-star category, which is considered the first of its kind in the kingdom. The Minister congratulated the Assistant Undersecretary for Human Resources and all Human Resources personnel that contributed in achieving this advanced level of institutional excellence. He affirmed the Ministry's keenness in developing and supporting the human element through the adoption of international standards within the framework of the development strategy and modernization in all the Ministry sectors. The Ministry's Assistant Undersecretary for Human Resources, Brigadier Adil Amin, delivered a speech in which he affirmed that upon the directive of the Minister, the Department has worked on achieving the highest level of services performance for the Ministry's employees through the implementation of international regulations and standards in institutional performance. He added that the Human Resources has received the Quality Management System 2000-9001 and the modern version of the ISO 9001-2015 Quality System, which affirms the implementation of quality system resources according to international standards. He added that in accordance with the Bahrain 2030 economic vision, the department has implemented the environmental management system and was the first government authority to receive the ISO 1401 certification. A short film was screened about the excellence of the Human Resources Department. The European Foundation for Quality Management President in the Middle East, Isra Mubayadeen, expressed her congratulations to the department. In a speech broadcast by video, the head of the evaluation team of the European Foundation for Quality Management, Rafael Abiyayo, affirmed that human resources are one of the leading institutions in the kingdom in implementing technologies and modern administrative applications, as well as having the necessary infrastructure for development. The Minister of Interior launched the Human Resources Services application designed and programmed by the Information Technology and Electronic Creativity Directorate. He also received the Institutional Distinction Certificate and honored the Institutional Excellence Team, the winners of the CV Global Human Resources Award, and the Information Technology and Electronic Creativity Team. The Vice President of the Financial and Economic Committee at the Shura Council, a member of the Delegation of the Parliamentary Division, participating in the work of the Standing Committee on Economic Affairs and Sustainable Development of the Asian Parliamentary Assembly, which is being held in Cyprus, Dr. Abdelaziz Abul condemned the interventions and forms of terrorism against Bahrain and all brotherly and friendly countries. He called on the international community to take the necessary measures to eliminate terrorism and drain its funding resources to achieve global security and stability. In response to Iranian suggestions during an energy discussion in Asia that call for non-interference and rejection of sanctions against Iran when using nuclear weapons, Dr. Abul firmly stated that Iran must stop its inter attempts to interfere with countries' internal affairs and to correct its policies with regard to its use of nuclear weapons in line with global policies that direct to benefit from green energies. 
Earlier today, we were joined by Dr. Abul, who briefed us on the assembly discussions. And to the viewers, in fact, uh, the meeting is on uh, economic affairs and sustainable development, and there were six proposals, six uh, resolutions to be approved by the committee in order to um, uh, uh, send them back to the plenary, which will be in October. And therefore, there were some decisions which were discussed before, and then we were uh, surprised by certain, uh, let's say, proposals by the Iranian delegation, and they were not discussed previously, and they tried to impose it on the meeting this time here in, in Cyprus. But, of course, we managed to stop them, and we managed to, in fact, delete them from the resolutions. They were four, resolu four proposals, and they were, there were others which are minor. We have uh, let those pass. They were not harmful. But these were, in fact, directed to, first of all, uh, uh, threaten the strategic interests of the GCC, particularly Saudi Arabia in terms of, um, of, of oil and uh, energy, and, and the GCC also others uh, uh, with regard to, to the, they wanted to us to reject the sanctions uh, on their, uh, on their uh, uh, nuclear programs and so forth, and we, we only supported peaceful uh, useful of nuclear uh, energy, but of course their resolution were also supported only for, for Iran. We, we managed to drop them from the discussion, and that was of course a, a, a victory for for, the, for Bahrain because Bahrain was the the, 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 the force, in fact, in, in this effort, and of course with the support of uh, our colleagues from um, particularly Saudi Arabia, UAE, and uh, Afghanistan. Thank I, can, you. I, can, I, can, I can tell you the, the details of the, of the resolutions themselves or the proposals. Yes. Yeah, we, we, no, no, we did not recommend. We, we, we objected to, to these okay. interventions or to the, to the proposals. And one of the proposals, for instance, they wanted to put uh, that they, we have to, let's say, uh, condemn any intrusion and intrusive measures, including political pressure, which is imposed on the energy market in Asia to prevent free flow of energy to the world. They, they, they meant that because Saudi Arabia, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, has a leading force in, in, in OPEC, and they, want, they wanted to make sure that we reject or just condemn the effort of Saudi Arabia. Implicitly, of course, they didn't, they didn't mention Saudi Arabia, but uh, from the discussion, it was apparent, and we did not accept that at all. Of course, Bahrain was a, for, um, a leading force into the objection, and we managed to drop it because that was interference in the sovereignty of um, um, a, a sovereign country, i.e. Saudi Arabia, and we did not, um, of course, uh, approve that. We objected to it in principle, and the people accepted our, uh, let's say, uh, project, uh, uh, objection, and it was dropped. They, of course, they and um, Russia, unfortunately, were supportive, and of course, they were, there was no uh, any support from others uh, to the Iranian and the Russian uh, position. All right, the sure. other one, the other, the other one, they wanted to um, uh, oppose any. Uh, that's all. All these, even the wordings from the Iranian uh, delegation, oppose any arbitrary sanctions by global powers on the free trade of energy in Asia, which is in, 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 in the sovereign right of APA member parliament. They mean Iran, of course. And we said um, we uh, uh, objected to that by stating that if they are concerned with the sovereignty of their country, they should respect the sovereignty of the Arab countries and, of, of course, Bahrain, because they have been interfering in the internal affairs of Bahrain and other countries like Yemen and so forth. And they have been stirring instability, regional instability, and, of course, threatening international peace by having uh, their uh, ambitions of nuclear weapons and so forth. And of course, the people also supported our uh, uh, position, and that was also dropped. All right, Shura Council Member Dr. Ablaziz Abul, thank you very much for joining us. In the presence of the President of the BACA, Sheikh Hamid bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, numerous events were held today at the UNESCO Village in line with the 42nd session of the committee. More in this report with Shogh Mohammed. The 42nd World Heritage Committee meeting continued today, with a number of events being held on the sidelines of the session. 
The Arab Regional Center for World Heritage, represented by Her Excellency Sheikh Amey bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, signed a memorandum of understanding with the Petro National Trust, represented by Her Royal Highness Princess Dana Firas, President of the Association. It is a source of incredible pride for the Arab world as a whole to see how professional and um, incredibly uh, uh, welcoming this this conference has been. The venue is phenomenal. Um, uh, it creates an environment that is incredibly conducive to a positive interaction. To have Bahrain become first a member of the World Heritage Committee and then to chair the World Heritage Committee is a source of incredible um, pride for all of us. But not only that, I think it is a testament to the role Bahrain has played in, in terms of culture, not only in the Arab world, but also on a global scene. For, a, for a, um, an island the size of Bahrain to have such a magnificent global role is really, really a testament to the leadership, to the vision of, of the Bahraini government, the Bahraini authorities. And specifically, I will pay tribute to Her Excellency Sheikh Hamad. Um, she's a pioneer in our region and, and a true leader in, in culture and in heritage preservation. The Arab Regional Center for World Heritage, in cooperation with IPOGEA, also organized workshops and symposiums focusing on water heritage and landscapes. What we were talking about today was the importance of wilderness areas and the very biggest, wildest places left on the planet. And the World Heritage Convention does a great job of protecting those places, but there are still gaps, and we could do a better job of using the World Heritage Convention systematically to protect more wilderness areas around the world. After the lecture and exhibition was opened, which includes pictures and valuable information about the oases, types and places of geographical distribution in the Arab region. We are very lucky that Bahrain hosts the Arab Regional Center for World Heritage in Manama here, which is a UNESCO attached center and which supports our work, especially my own work in the Arab region to implement the convention. And this exhibition and the side event on oasis and traditional irrigation systems is part of the work that they do with us to raise awareness on fragile heritage in our region that needs more attention. Less than 10% of world heritage sites in the Arab world are related to water heritage. The Arab world has 82 sites on the world heritage list, including 74 cultural sites, 5 natural sites and 3 mixed sites. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogun Mohammed.